Hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. This is a channel where I typically like to make videos about books as well as videos about homeschooling, mostly book related. Today's video is a homeschooling video. It's not necessarily about books, but it's about math. So what I wanna to do today is a comparison slash review video of the three math curriculums we have used for kindergarten. There are a lot of different math curriculums out there, especially for kindergarten. These are just the three that I have tried when I chose these three. I was looking for the use of manipulatives or little pieces to learn math. I was also looking for a curriculum that was really good at mental math. And so I'll be talking about Right Start Math. I'll be talking about Matthew C. So we have Matthew C. Primer. And then I'll be talking about Singapore Math, the dimensions type math, not the primary, but dimensions math. So those are the three that I'll be reviewing today. So my plan for this video is to take you first through a comparison of the three, kind of a brief comparison, and then I want to take you individually through each curriculum and do sort of a review, share with you what the curriculum is known for, what it's really good at, what we really appreciated about it, and, and different materials you might need for that curriculum. And then I want to end more with our journey. Like we started with how we made our decisions to where we are now. My plan is to put timestamps in the video in case you're just interested in one of the three so you can kind of fast forward through the parts that you are not interested in. Let's just jump in. So I created a chart that I wanted to kind of be able to help me organize my thoughts in comparing these three curriculums. So I want to compare based on manipulatives. I want to compare based on price, if it's spiral or mastery, and then mental math. So to start with, manipulatives. Of the three programs, two of them are excellent with manipulatives. So Right Start Math, I'd say, is like the top, the top for if you want math manipulatives. They have a lot. It's an amazing program for that. It's really known for that. And then Matthew C. also has its block set that it uses as a manipulatives type set. But Singapore Math doesn't necessarily come with a manipulative set. It does talk about it in the instructor guide, but that's more on you as a teacher to bring in manipulatives as you see fit. So the second part is mental math, which programs are really good at really from the beginning, ground up, teaching kids to be able to do math in their head. And I would say the two programs that are really good about that is Right Start Math is very good about teaching mental math, as well as Singapore Math is also really good and well known for teaching mental math. For spiral versus mastery, Right Start is, in my opinion, a spiral. So when you're talking spiral, that just means that it's, it's teaching topics and bringing them back up and bringing them back up and starting something new and bringing something back in. Starting something new and bringing something back in. So you don't teach it to mastery, you just introduce it and then bring it back. And then Matthew C is the extreme in the, in the realm of mastery program. Different levels will teach a whole concept in and of itself. Like I can't remember which level it is exactly, but there's one that's like addition and then one that's multiplication and things like that. And so the primer or the kindergarten level doesn't do that per se. It teaches a broad range of topics from different shapes and things like that to starting to add, to adding one as you exit primer into alpha, beta, or then it starts to really hone in on a certain subject matter, and then it teaches it to mastery. And then I would say the last one, Singapore math, I would call it somewhere in between. It is definitely mastery in its approach, but it's mastery in kind of big chunks. This kindergarten A there was one through six different chapters, and a chapter would have anywhere from, I think it was like eight to 16 lessons, and you would really hit that topic hard. So you'd kind of, it, whether it's weight and length and concentration or something like that, or if counting one to 10, then it would hit that topic within those lessons all at the same time. So you're not spiraling back to that all the time, but you're switching subjects. So I, I would call it almost a little bit of both. I'd say it's more heavier on the mastery, but yet within one year, you're learning all, all sorts of different topics. You're just not doing them in a very, circular sort of fashion. I feel like certain kids thrive under a spiral approach and certain kids thrive under a mastery approach. So it just depends on your child. And the last thing I wanna to touch upon in this chart comparison is price. Right Start is the, the most expensive to get into because there's that big manipulatives kit that's required for all the levels. So what's good about it is it you get all your manipulatives 
for all the levels in one kit. So it's not like you're buying a kit every year by any means. You buy one, but it is like about $200 or something like that. So I'd say right start is definitely on the pricier. And then I would kind of call Matthew C and Singapore similar, not the cheapest. There are definitely cheaper math programs, but I would say these are more middle of the road for price. So that's just a basic comparison. And some of these are in my opinion. And if you feel differently, especially about things like the spiral approach or mental math or anything like that, feel free to comment. This is just what I have learned having used them with my kindergartner. So let me flip the camera around and show you the stuff for all three different programs. I have laid out all the stuff for Right Start Math. So this is level A. So there are a number of required materials and I have put basic stuff here as well as laid out the manipulatives over there and I will show those to you in just a second. This is the teacher's guide. It's really good. It's really kind of fun. It sets things up for you so you always have your materials, you always know kind of your activities or your warm-ups, and then what you're planning on doing, and then your um, review and conclusion. So this is just one day. And and it goes up to like 100 and some odd lessons, 132. One of the main things that drew me to this program was the idea that it didn't have very many worksheets. You're, you're really working with your students to learn these math concepts. You You focus on things like like subitizing, which just means being able to look at something and know how many there are versus having to count, which is a really good tool. It's hard for this age and you just keep working at it, but it's a good tool for them to be able to glance at like a number card, for instance, a number card like this and be able to know that that's five. Since the program does not focus on worksheets, it focuses very heavy on interactions between you and your child. So it's definitely teacher intensive. This program uses the AL Abacus, and we've loved the Abacus. I, my kids really like it. It's really fun. It teaches through games. So there's lots of different games with lots of different cards and things like that, which will help your student play as well as learn, which I love that concept. Not as much sit and just do math sheets and you'll have this song that you start from the beginning the yellow is the sun song which we have we still seen even though we don't use this program anymore and then it, the other part that's important is the appendix sheets which you will be cutting out and using a lot of things and so they're just very helpful anyway so those are kind of the the bundle i think it is how it's sold i can't remember i bought a lot of things used actually i bought everything used except for the worksheets and the appendix sheets. I was able to pick up everything else used, which is amazing. And I highly recommend that, especially for this program since it's a little bit more expensive. Okay, so this was the bundle, so this is part of it. And then like I said, the larger chunk of this program is its manipulative set. So let me grab you off of this and I will show you that. I've laid out the manipulative set and you can see it's a decent amount of stuff that is just sitting all out here on my table. I store it in these two big bins. And so like I already pointed out, it's stuff like the AL Abacus, there's money and time. There's this balance, this blue thing in the back is a balance and it comes with the little balancers or the weights. Fraction cards, little cubes, little tiles, all of the different geo boards and shapes. And then it comes over here and you have all of your different card games for cards and here you have place value cards here learning to count by twos and fours and things like that fractions your different cubes it's just there's so much it's amazing and it's really really cool how involved it is how hands-on it is especially if your your kids are kinesthetic learners this is an outstanding program i i think really highly of the right start program so that is a really pretty good overview Okay, so the next program I want to show you is Math UC. Math UC is another commonly used math curriculum. And so I was drawn to it, like I said before, because of the manipulative set, which I will show you in just a second. I just want to show you kind of the basic, what you need to make this work. And so you need the instruction manual, which I'm not sure if you really need that for the kindergarten, but usually people sell the instruction manual and the DVD at the same time. And I actually bought it used, but you can buy it off their site and they come as a, a bundle. It's one of the unique 
aspects of Matthew C. that drew me was that there is a DVD series where there's a teacher, Mr. Dempsey, who goes to the lesson for the week. So these are set into chapters one through, I forget, like 30-ish, and then lessons A through F or A through G. And so you're supposed to do kind of one a week. And so you do the video, you watch the video right before you do A, and then you do A through F throughout the rest of the week. And so I really did like the DVD. Kind of fun having someone else teach your child. I feel like sometimes they learn it better or they listen better, or I say like stuff like, what would Mr. Dempsey say? And it kind of encourages them a little bit more than sometimes just what would mom say? The student worksheets are here, and you can see they're, they're pretty straightforward, black and white. You have these squares, which are commonly used for some of the manipulatives, which now I'm gonna take you off again and show you the block set. So here's the block set. And I was able, I was really lucky, I was able to pick up these wonderful wooden cases from the person who I bought it used. And these red ones are your 100 blocks. And so they're the big blocks and otherwise it goes from one, two, three, four, five, all the way around. My, my son actually labeled them a little bit to help him. But the idea is that they'll start to remember that the sevens are the light tan. So how they use this is they can do things like they go three plus two. Then they can be like, wait, is that six? No. You're like, is that five? Yes, those are equal. That's a fun way to use these blocks and that's one of the things my son really liked about these. So that's really the block set. It's not as extensive by any means as the Right Start, but it's still very hands-on. Okay, so here is the last math program I would like to talk about today, and that is the Singapore Math, Singapore Math Dimensions Math. In this case, kindergarten, so K, you need KA and KB, so this should, this is kind of half the program, second half of the program, and all you need is a teacher's guide, you need the textbook, which they actively write in with you, like you work through this with them, and then you'll need workbooks. So we have already finished KA workbook, so I don't have any more of those, but we are just starting B. They're very colorful workbooks that are intended for your students to be able to do them by themselves. Granted, I still have to help because I have to read instructions, but I can read the instructions and then he can do it. And so that's amazing, and then these these teacher guides are very useful because they're set up in a way that you can run with it how you need to. Say you've come across a concept that your, your student is struggling with, there are a lot of ideas for you to do like scavenger hunts or, or different games or small group activities or there's extensions if you want to like stay here longer to really work on the concept or say your student has no problem with understanding a curved versus a flat edge and so you can kind of introduce it, play with some of the manipulatives you might have because there are no manipulatives with this curriculum or that are sold with this curriculum. It's the assumption that you can find some stuff around your house or that you have access to things. Like in this case, geometric shapes, um, pattern blocks, which we actually had both of those things. We, and so you are able to use some of the things in your house, but it's not a part of this curriculum. And they actually even have a website where there's extra resources for you. You just kind of have to plan it a little bit more. So it's a little bit more planning as where Matthew C, which I didn't mention, Matthew C is very open and go like, right start, highest teacher intensiveness. Singapore math, medium teacher intensiveness. You definitely have to be involved. You're working with them. And then Matthew C is much a lower teacher intensiveness for you very much. Use the DVD to your advantage and then you make sure your students are understanding. But when it comes to dimensions math, what, what really drew me was kind of their process. So the idea that in really traditional math programs, students are taught something. They're given an example that's worked through on the board, for instance, and then they're given similar problems to that example problem. And Singapore math teaches a concept and then utilizes different worksheets and things like that to look at it, that same concept from a different angle. So it's not the exact same example with new numbers. It's very much teaching them to think about math and really ingrain those concepts. That is what I want to show you with the different materials you need for Singapore math. And now I'm gonna flip everything back around and I'm gonna talk a little bit about our journey. 
why we went through all three of these and ended up with this program. Okay, so a little bit about our experience. So my process, when I was first looking into curriculums for math for my kindergartner, is I'm, I'm really drawn to two different types of philosophies. So Charlotte Mason, as well as kind of a classical, so Susan Weisbauer, well-trained mind sort of idea. And from what I was learning through both of them is the idea that younger kids really need manipulatives. It's, it's harder for them to understand concepts like math, which are a bit more abstract without something hands-on, something tangible that they can touch, which makes complete sense to me. And that's why I was initially drawn to RiceArt, which is a very hands-on program for learning has all those manipulatives. It is not focused on your, your child sitting at a desk doing a bunch of worksheets. First thing I learned is he would just be like a little bit lost. Like he wanted, he had a brain that was more like he'd rather learn it all at once than to keep spiraling. It kept throwing him off and kept throwing him off and we just couldn't get in a rhythm because it kept switching so much. And I'm kind of built that way too. So I was like, I get you buddy. So that was probably the main reason we switched out of Bright Start and wanted to try something else. The secondary reason was the age of my twins at the time is that such a teacher intensive program at this stage in my homeschool was just a little too much. It was very hard for me to sit down with all these manipulatives where they wanted to grab it and throw it and all these things and that was hard. So I naturally was like, okay, well I believe in this idea of manipulatives so the next best place for me to land was Matthew C. Because Matthew C still had those blocks, it still had the ability to touch and feel math but it had a dvd that could really help me out it was a little bit more student independent even though like i don't think you can be truly student independent at a six-year-old level the primer wasn't necessarily mastery but it wasn't spiraling all the time it wasn't switching abruptly and so that we liked better i think what it ended up making me kind of like huh this isn't necessarily the right fit is because he didn't use the manipulatives he could just do the math in his head or always have to keep reminding him like, oh buddy, use your blocks, use your blocks. You're supposed to be using your blocks. And he's like, oh, sure mom, I'll do it for you. Not because it actually helped him. And so it took me a while of like seeing that over and over to realize like he can do this without the blocks or maybe he's not kinesthetic. And so it was kind of this, this like light bulb moment where I was like, oh, I think manipulatives are good. And I think we can still keep using them. And that is by no means am I like chucking them out the door, but they're not gonna be the main focus of what I pick for my math curriculum. So I went back to the drawing board and I was like, all right, so he seems to kind of be able to understand things pretty well in his head. And so where that led me was Singapore. Singapore tends to have a reputation of more strict or, or more rigorous. And so that put me off a little. I was like, oh, I don't want it to be too hard but he does seem a little bit gifted in it. And so I wanted to try. And so that's what, what had us picking up the Singapore math to just see how he does. And so far so good. I feel like he really does enjoy the process that it isn't just a regurgitation of the workbook. And he seems to thrive. He's doing really well. He likes math. And so I think for now, this has been a really good choice. As for Right Start and Matthew C, I have a four and a half year old who is going to be starting kindergarten in the fall. So my plan is to hold on to everything just in case she doesn't have the same response to math that he did. And if, if she needs more manipulatives or that helps her, or she is more kinesthetic, I wanna have those things on hand because I still really believe in the idea. I just realize that it's not something he needs, but she might. So we're gonna kind of keep those programs in my back pocket, if you will. So yeah, that was our journey. And I think we've landed in a really good spot. And I hope that this review comparison video has been helpful, especially with these three, if you're considering these three options, which are common. Please let me know if you have any questions about these three programs, about how we used it, about anything in particular that you, thought, if you think I might be able to answer. I'd be more than happy to try. And otherwise, thank you for watching. And please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really helps out. And it's just fun for me to interact with you all. So anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you in the next video. Okay, take care.